What's going on everybody? Good morning, good evening, or wherever you are, and whatever time it is, and welcome back to yet another video with me and Immersion Holic. And of course, welcome to episode eight of my head-to-head -head campaign playing as a Lusitani for the Divide Tim Power of War Mod for Total War Rome 2. Woo! That was a mouthful, but ladies and gentlemen, welcome to episode eight. In the last episode, things kicked off. We tried to make a little bit of a initial push into southern gaul and it basically backfired entirely everything that could have went wrong went wrong although we did win the majority of the battles that we were engaged with however the worst is yet to come you can see here in the center of the screen the nervii armies are coming up from the north and they have many many armies it's not just these three stacks we're expecting at least around six full nervii stacks heading our way however let's get into it so initially we actually have to worry about holding off the Averni. The Averni coming with two massive stacks. Uh, they are doing a bridge assault against us. However, I am going to just order us over the way since the percentage was so high for us to win. And even if I played it manually and fought my man Toxborg, who's playing uh, in the head to head campaign with me, FYI, link is down below as always. Um, he would get a lot more kills than what the AI would get. So. I'm basically going to cut my losses and just order resolve the Averni away. Um, not ideal, but it's basically a no-win situation regardless. So at the very least, if I do it this way, I'll basically guarantee that I'll win the battle and uh, deal with the Averni stacks without too much issue. Although we did take about a couple thousand losses, but it was kind of spread out between our two armies. So it's okay. We were fending off against almost 10,000 Averni to be fair. So with the Averni out of the way, the Nervii are coming down still from the northwest. So we still need to continue withdrawing our forces back south. We were going to try and hold at this uh, river crossing just outside of Bertigala. But it just wasn't really going to work, especially not with our armies now being depleted. So they will pull back and get out of their ambushing stance and uh, try to figure out what to do. Do we uh, send them all the way back to Iberia to recuperate or... Do we go for Bertigala now that that massive navy that was in Bertigala is no longer there? And so that's what we're going to do actually. Before we retreat our armies back to Iberia to recover, we will assault the city of Bertigala. But again, this is going to be an easy order to resolve. It's not worth fighting this battle manually at all. With that, the Vaviski are finally taken out of the game. Although they will have like a navy hanging out in the middle of nowhere. Uh, for all intents and purposes, the Vaviski are done. Bertigal is now finally ours after this massive mess that we've had for about the last year or so in game. Um, the, the new Bertigal uh, government is actually more than happy to get trade with us as well, so that would be super helpful. Uh, in the meantime, we're going to disband our navy. It's not very helpful right now. It's not very powerful or strong, so it's not really worth the massive upkeep. So instead, looking down south here at Kartuba, we have our king. He's been basically a governor throughout this entire campaign, which has been really helpful in establishing our culture and public order in uh, new regions that we conquered. However, now the time for being a administrator is over and time to be a general has come. And so he will be recruiting a brand new army down in the south, bringing our army total up to about five armies, I believe. Now we currently have four basically full strength ones, although some of them are slightly depleted. Uh, but it, we need to get as many armies as we can, which is going to be tricky because our economy is struggling. But I am going to be trying to focus on having more cheap units. In the north, Toxport continues moving his armies towards Bertigala. Um, we still only see a couple of them. The fog of war is very harsh on us at this time. This entire area up here is about to pop off, and so we need to get the hell out of Dodge and fall back to Iberia. Um, the people that live in Bertigala are not at war with the Nervii, so they should be okay, unless Toxborg wants to be the aggressor and continue his assaults against us and our allies by attacking the city. But he chooses not to, and he'll continue marching south as time goes on. However, in the meantime, Massalia has actually sent in a secret invasion into Iberia. However, thankfully, our most professional and elite army at this time uh, is actually in an ambush stance ready to catch this army completely off guard. And so 
Our Iberian army will ambush the Massalians in one of our first major battles against them. However, uh, the game had some massive issues with this and I really wanted to fight this manually since it's our first real battle against Massalia. Unfortunately though, um, every time we tried to fight the battle manually, the game crashed, so something about that area that was causing a CTD. So instead, we will have to order us over away. We'll take quite a few casualties because we had to order us over it. However, we will stop the Massalians in their tracks. So that's what's important. And we will follow up and chase down the survivors and cut them down to a man. However, towards Brigantium in the northwest, we have a major issue. The Nervii are launching an amphibious assault into our territory. However, it's actually not that big of a deal. We have a general with a few mercenary units, our large garrison, and they only have a fleet attacking us. So there's no actual land troops. And even though they began the assault on our city and tried to push against us, our garrison was far too strong for them. They had no chance whatsoever. They didn't even have the numbers uh, remotely close to ours. And because of that, they actually withdrew after losing only a few ships uh, that had landed on our beaches. So we get a decisive victory, but the majority of their navy will survive because they withdrew from the battle. They actually didn't rout, they withdrew. There goes the fleet off into the Eastern Atlantic or just into the Atlantic. Uh, we will need to keep an eye out for that, but the Navy is basically as weak as ours. So after that little encounter, I'm not too worried about any more naval assaults upon our territory. Although we need to be careful of our capital uh, because it is a coastal settlement. However, that defeat will not stop the Nervii and they will continue pushing into Iberian. Here we see three massive armies coming straight to Arachillum. Well, we have the majority of our Iberian armies recovering from the previous engagements that they've been involved in. Um, now is not a good time. However, autumn is almost over and winter is almost here. So if we can hopefully hold out a little bit longer, then winter will delay the Nervii advance massively. Uh, but in the meantime, we are continuing to, sing our, to send our king north. He is recruiting more bear warriors. He has a lot of them now. He actually has uh, five total in this army so far. Nothing else. And you will recruit more warriors as he continues uh, marching north. And at this point of the game, we actually have access to pretty much the entire Lusitani roster. And the majority of our units are actually excellent. Um, we are trying to use more Freeman units though. Uh, that's because it's our largest population class. So you'll see a lot of lighter sword infantry getting involved. Thankfully though, the Nervii High King is way too cautious and does not push deeper into Iberia. They are technically in our territory raiding, but they are stuck here in winter. And so we're going to basically use the winter to rebuild our armies and try to do as much recon on the enemy armies as we can. They have three major stacks all close together. However, we have seen others in the area. So that's also another reason why we aren't rushing to get an engagement. You can see in the top right of the screen, actually, there's another Nervii coming in. But in this blue circle, there is still three Nervii armies. So now we have four 100% Nervii armies in a very close proximity to each other. So that is why, again, we've got to be super cautious. So we don't want to push and uh, risk throwing away this entire campaign. In the meantime, we see that uh, extra army that came in from the north begin marching east. So it looks like the Nervii are going to divide their assault against us by sending two of their major armies east along the coast. And then they still have their three other major armies though coming straight up the center into our heartland. But now that winter has passed and now summer is back, our armies are completely recuperated and they are ready to go. So now we have four massive Lusitani armies going to square off against the three massive Nervii armies. Although at this time I actually thought there was four uh, Nervii armies there. I thought one of them was in an ambush stance, but it doesn't look like there is. So because of that, we will actually uh, go and engage shortly. But we're basically squaring off against each other, trying to see who is going to make the first move. And eventually, after being ever so patient, uh, I run out of patience and I begin the assault. So we will begin by attacking the rear army out of the Nervii massive column. We will flank along the shoreline and use the forest to hide from their forces. And instead of launching a direct assault, we'll actually launch a night battle upon the enemy camp while they're completely not prepared and separated from their other reinforcing armies. 
Now, we also did fight this battle manually, but I will skip over it as we have another battle that definitely takes precedent over this coming up. So, because it was a night assault though, it was basically like an ambush, and we easily routed the massive Nervii army that was coming towards us. However, there are still two extremely large Nervii armies just uh, raiding our territory just around the corner from that battle. The majority of the Nervii army gets wiped out, however they still have their High King and one of their most skilled generals uh, waiting alongside him with their massive armies as well. But now ladies and gentlemen we have 11,000 Lusitani warriors coming to take on just under seven to 8,000 Nervii. This is going to be a massive battle, we're hoping to kill the High King of the Nervii here and possibly deal a final blow to their incursions into Iberia. Who knows? Let's have a look and see how the battle goes. And here we are on the battlefield. Now I know the order is off by heavily favored us. However, you can see here this battle map is absolutely terrible. We are at the bottom of a valley and the Nervii army is way, way on top of a mountain. You can see in the distance there, that is the mountain that the Nervii are sitting on. Not the one in the far distance underneath the sun, but a little bit in front of that. So they have a massive steep incline for our troops to have to march up and basically assault directly. There's no way for us to get around uh, their massive battle line because there's so many men involved. Here you can see just one of our armies already in formation and preparing to assault. Uh, but we still have more armies that will be coming up behind them shortly. But uh, Here you can see though, initially we are basically forming a defensive position and waiting for our reinforcements. Because even though our troops are generally more skilled, we do want to try and make sure that this is going to be a for sure win. And we'll wait for the reinforcements to arrive. One of our reinforcing armies is coming right in behind our first deployed army, so that will make it super easy to actually merge with the uh, first main one and form up a main battle line. However, way further to the north up here, to the uh, left hand side of the screen, we'll be seeing more uh, friendly troops coming in, so that'll take a little bit longer to come over, but because we have so many men, we'll actually form a main battle line basically across the entire battlefield. But Anyway, we have a lot of men coming in, is the bottom line. Here are the Nervii holding their position, dare I say, hiding on top of the mountain here, terrified of what the Lusitani bear warriors will do to them. And they do nothing but hold their position for a very long time, at least these warriors do. However, that is not all that is going on on the battlefield. Way down below, the Nervii Cavalry, with their insane stalk abilities, launch a surprise attack and begin trying to assassinate our generals. They go straight for our generals in the middle of our formation because they have the guerrilla deployment perk and the stalk ability. We didn't see them coming. However, we have a lot of javelins nearby and some cavalry. Not a lot of cavalry, but enough to deal with them. And so we will surround them and wipe them out extremely quickly. One of our general's bodyguards uh, suffers a lot of losses. However, we actually didn't lose any of our generals. So thankfully, the assassination attempt fails miserably for the Nervii, and we'll go back to forming our army. However, we do see a lot of uh, reinforcing troops coming in along the northern ridge of uh, the Nervii position. It looks like they're basically forming up on the very edge of this blue line, which is basically the edge of the entire massive ridge that they're holding on. So that's going to be super hard to push. Um, we're hoping to exploit the left flank, but as you can see, it's taking a long time for our armies to try and form up, since we do have 11,000 Lusitani warriors trying to form up on the field of battle. So we form our formation by having our cavalry on the far left, and then we have a section of bear warriors over here. Um, the bear warriors will be basically a mobile contingent that we'll be using to try and wrap around the left hand flank of the enemy, get some rear charges that will cause devastating casualties to the enemy. Meanwhile, our center is forming up into basically three lines, although I guess technically four in a bit. Um, but our first main line is our light infantry swordsmen, then we have our skirmishers right behind them, and then in the far rear, we have our bear warriors, general, and spearmen. Uh, 
respectively. And our bear warriors will be basically trying to exploit holes in the enemy line, try and wrap around the enemy and get some uh, charges from the left and right. And our spearmen will be rotating when necessary. On the far right, we have one unit of, of cavalry, not really a lot. Um, and we have another wing of swordsmen and spearmen in one line after the other. But our right wing is basically going to play a very defensive role in this battle. And you'll see that shortly as the battle begins. The Nerve Guy launch another little counterattack against us by sending down their chariots. They don't send anything to support them though, although they are trying to mass target our bear warriors. And so we're trying to defend our bear warriors that are not suited to holding off cavalry charges. However, their chariots are not very good. They are not scythe chariots, they're not very large. And overall, they're quite fragile and um, fairly slow on the battlefield. And because of that, our javelins combined with a counterattack from our own cavalry charging straight head on into the enemy chariots will wipe them out with actually just within a matter of moments uh the enemy chariots did not do a lot of damage and they will suffer because of it after that was dealt with it's time for our entire army to move up our right hand flank and our center will move up and form a single solid battle line that would mainly be staying in a defensive position for quite a while however because we have more men on the far left hand flank here to the north side of the battle we will be trying to focus the majority of the attack on the northern side however the enemy does have archers swinging in but they don't really seem to have too much more cavalry so we're going to be sending our cav all the way up and around their enemy lines and get up on the hill so we can get some nice rear charges however speaking of charges the enemy charges down the hill directly into our men and gets beautiful charges against us which is absolutely not what we want the nervi are definitely good on the charge Perhaps not as good as us, but they're still very good. And they're basically hanging down on the side of cliffs, which is perfect for charging down against us. So uh, we will take some pretty serious losses from that. However, our bear warriors will still be getting those outflanking charges because the Nervii are so disorganized in their attack. Um, so right here, we're seeing our bear warriors cut down the backs of these naked Nervii swordsmen. Meanwhile, our cavalry is intercepted by the last final remnants of the Nervii Cav. They only have about three units in total, but we only have about the same, and their units are better. They have the Remy Elite Nervii Cavalry. However, we do have spearmen getting involved that will tip the battle in our favor on that side. Uh, we just need to hold out for a little bit longer. Meanwhile, we're sending up our bear warriors through these cracks along the red lines. Uh, we're getting a lot of little holes in the enemy battle line. Like I said, they're very disorganized. They are just some backward swamp barbarians so because of that we are starting to outflank them and outsmart them throughout much of the uh, enemy battle line however in our center they do get a nice charge uh, downhill against some of our units although not all of them so we will have mixed results in the center and we'll see that develop shortly however you can see a lot of arrows are flying in and that's going to cause us some serious casualties to our lighter uh, lightly armed units at the front which is our light swordsman Meanwhile, the right-hand flank of our army is actually still moving forward, but in a defensive uh, position. Uh, although here, we do get our army way too close on the right-hand flank, and because of that, we will most likely be punished for it. And actually, here you can see, we were punished for it. The enemy ended up charging down the hill, and they got some very nice charges against us. However, it is just spearmen taking on our swordsmen, and so eventually, spears will almost always lose against most swordsmen. And uh, those swordsmen are very skilled, so they'll definitely win that battle eventually. But we might need some reinforcements to come and hold the line. But as we were speaking about holes in the main battle line, here is a massive one. And it allows us to come up and target a large contingent of the enemy archers. This is a massive mistake on the Nervii part. And because of this, they're about to lose one of their biggest advantages that they have over us. Which is, of course their stealthy archers that hide in the forest in almost all of our battles that we've had with them. On the far left hand flank things are going excellent. The enemy camp has been routed off the field, our swordsmen and, their, and the remnants of our cavalry are now flanking around the northern side of the battlefield and are charging to even more of the enemy archers and their other contingents that are up here hiding in the forest. They do try and ambush us at a few little points, um, but we just have better units and we have more of them. And because of that, we will charge directly head on into them, not hide away. 
and continue our push directly south along the ridge line as we continue wrapping up the enemy. Speaking of wrapping up, the enemy archers are now in a full rout. A single unit of cavalry was enough to rout their entire contingent of archers and some of their spearmen. So now that the enemy is actually fully engaged in, along the battle line, we can use our cavalry to get a beautiful downhill charge bonus against them and use their own uh, position on the hill against them to actually focus uh, on rear charging their general. Meanwhile, on the right-hand flank on the south side of the battlefield, things are actually starting to stabilize. The Nervii is starting to waver, and our troops received enough reinforcements to hold the battle line and kill enough of the enemy spearmen. Uh, the, their swordsmen were doing okay against us, but the majority of their spearmen are getting cut down extremely fast. And here, we can see the final last stand of the enemy High King of the entire Gallia Confederation, or the Nervii Confederation known as Gallia. And even though his bodyguards are fighting fairly valiantly, they're going up against very skilled, heavy Lusitani swordsmen. And these swordsmen are very experienced, especially in fighting the Nervii now that we've had a lot of battles. And their High King actually falls in the battle, and we win against the Nervii. After that High King fell, his entire army routed. And here you can see... The results of that, we had 7,300 Nervii troops going up against 11,000 Lusitani. It was a massive battle and there really wasn't too much to show for it um, after we had started wrapping up at Northern Edge. I also know and during that battle replay it did say a defeat. That was just a bug with the battle replay so please ignore that. Nothing to see there. But here you can see the actual results. The High King actually managed to escape somehow from that carnage even though he was knocked down and his entire bodyguard routed uh the rest of his army was basically slaughtered and so we will chase them down and kill the remaining survivors although we did somehow lose one of our generals in that battle so that was a little bit of a loss for us but nothing too crazy but here the high king and the remnants of the entire nervi invasion are wiped out and cut down to a blue walker man, which is exactly what we were hoping for. There is our decisive victory against them. We will still ransom the captives, although the majority of the enemy were killed anyway, so it doesn't make too much of a difference. After we wiped out the High King and his massive invasion force, we did a little bit of diplomacy seeking. While the, the majority of the Mediterranean still doesn't want to have anything to do with us, the Editani, who have been our allies for quite a while now, are actually willing to confederate with us. And now, we are not only known as the Lusitani, but Celtiberia. We are the Celtiberian Confederation now, representatives of all of Iberia. Here are the uh, military forces that the Editani provide us with alongside the city of Ars, uh, along the coastline of eastern Iberia there, so that's interesting. Um, however, in the meantime, things continue to deteriorate, though. Despite our very good victories, the Massalians have come up and actually assaulted and taken the city of Bertigala, which is very bad for us. In addition, the Nervii are continuing their invasion into eastern Iberia. And we have a couple armies down along the coast here trying to protect us, although they are separated and they are not in very good defensive positions to stop this Nervii incursion. However, maybe if we can stop this Nervii incursion, we can actually finally go on the offensive and begin attacking Nervii core territories. Assuming, of course, we can get through Massalia, which is now an entirely new issue now that they've retaken Bertigala from us. However, that will have to wait until the next episode. So, so thank you all so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed and I shall see you in the next one.